Hi everyone and welcome back to the Rocketeer. Today I'm going to show you how I made a 3 quarter inch by 6 inch PVC rocket motor just using some common and easy to find parts at a big box store and a few fender washers and uh, some red RTB silicone that's uh, like gasket maker and uh, just a few other things and that's about it. So the project's pretty easy to make. I've had a lot of fun with it. I did test it out a few times in the backyard and the motor performed very well. So then I loaded it into a spool. And if you've not seen that video, you want to check that out after this video. And uh, I launched it off the pad. It went up faster than I thought. And then, yeah, I'm not going to tell you. You're just going to have to find out for yourself. <laughs> Why spoil it, right? So I'm going to gather up some materials. We'll get everything ready to go. And I'll meet you back here. We want to begin by washing the PVC pipe in dish water. What happens is the pipe gets really dirty sitting around in, in the uh, big box store or it's delivered on large trucks where oftentimes you get road grime in it. And we want the propellant to stick to the inside of the PVC pipe. So wash that, let it air dry, and that way it'll be ready to use when we're ready to cast the fuel. I'm going to prepare the coring tool or the mandrel by wrapping it in aluminum. But first, before I do that, I want to use this uh, petroleum jelly, um, sometimes called Vaseline, to coat the mandrel here so that when I wrap it with the aluminum foil, I'll be able to pull it out of the propellant after it sets and gets and hardens. Because what happens is the propellant, as it cools, it will shrink and really grab all that mandrel and if you don't use uh, some sort of release agent on it or the foil you won't be able to get the mandrel out. I mean it really clamps on there hard. So I'm going to show you how I prep the manual and what's required for that and then we'll move on to the next step. Let's move that out of the way. So what you want to do is apply a generous coat on the mandrel because this is going to act like a liquid bearing and allow the foil to slide out from around it while it's under pressure. So I'm going to apply a generous coating of the Vaseline. I'm making two mandrels here because I'm going to cast two separate cores. And uh, of course you're going to want to use uh, paper towels. Have a generous uh, amount of paper towels. It is a little bit messy. But uh, now that we've got that on there, I'm going to check it, make sure it covers all of it evenly with a generous coat. Like that. Okay, now that we got that on there, what I want to do is wrap the foil with the shiny side out. This is non-stick aluminum. Uh, it's a little bit better than the regular aluminum uh, because it's non-stick, it's super shiny, and it tends to pull off a little bit easier. So it takes a little bit to get it started. Bear with me while I get it on there. But once you get it rolling, uh, it goes on there pretty good. Now you want to have it at a, a decent angle like that. This is a two inch piece. And uh, you want to try to wrap it on there without too many wrinkles if you can. You can smooth it out a little bit as you go. But uh, we're going to wrap that on there like that. And uh, I'm going to pull it just slightly tight. You don't want it real tight because uh, it will grip the rod too much. You want that uh, core tool, the mandrel, to come out easily. Okay, once we get the mandrel wrapped up to the end, make sure that there are not any large wrinkles or anything like that in it. That looks good. Then I twist the end of it, like this. And cut the tip off of it. Smooth it out just a bit, like that. And then trim the opposite end off of it. There, that one's ready to go. So before I push it into the propellant, I am going to wipe the Vaseline off because it is not flammable. I'm going to just go ahead and clean it up a bit before I push it into the fuel. I've cleaned up the mandrel and put a small piece of cellophane tape on the end of it to keep it from unraveling. 
I'm going to make a gasket that goes in the guide. And uh, what I did was I took my quarter inch fender washer that I'm using for the nozzle. I just traced around it, that left the indent there. I cut it out and then I place it in the cap. And what that does is it keeps fuel from leaking down and making a big mess and getting down into here. And also it uh, provides a positive feedback that I have the coring tool in the center and that it will uh, proceed all the way through the end cap. So I just cut one out per motor, just need it on the bottom and then we're good to go. I like this Oatly brand epoxy clay. I've used several others. Uh, steel stick would probably work too, but it's a little more expensive. But I'll leave a link to this in the description. I do earn a small commission on things that I sell, so that does help support the channel. But I like this stuff. It's a little bit cheaper than uh, some of the others, and it works really well. I've tried some other brands that did not work quite as well. Uh, so I like the Oatly. Uh, that's your choice. Anyway, so I'm going to force like uh, about a little over half full into the cap, and then I drill a hole straight through it and put a, a generous chamfer on there so that the mandrel can pass through this. Before we get started, I just wanted to say this is a real rocket motor. You could get burned pouring the fuel. It could come down, land on a doghouse, burn the doghouse down. This demands respect. So the safety part of it is up to you. I'll try to show you every step what I did to make it safe. But in the end, you're going to be responsible for your own safety and that of your neighborhood too. All right, let's go. I'm using an induction cooktop and it is well worth the cost, the investment to purchase one of these because you don't have to heat the fuel up very fast, just a small amount of heat. Uh, and it, this is very well controlled by the induction cooktop. It's a lot safer to use. I don't recommend the other type of uh, cooktops that you see that are commonly used that are inexpensive. Sure, this costs a little bit of money, but well worth it in the long run and safer. You also have to have a pan that's rated for the induction cooktop. All these things can be found on Amazon. I'll leave links in the description. The coring tool is prepared. I have used some cooking spray on it to uh, further lubricate this uh, coring tool as it goes down through the hot propellant and uh, just use whatever your favorite flavor is. I'm using some leather gloves to protect my hands from the heat and I'm using 65-35, the standard uh, ratio for sugar fuel, 65% potassium nitrate, 35% in this case fructose because it melts really at a low temperature, easy to work with, and it provides a lot of thrust. So I'm going to go ahead and start the process and uh, you'll hear the induction cooktop, the fan running in it, but uh, that's not a problem. You should be able to hear me uh, as I illustrate how to do this. Okay, let's get started. I'm turning the power down to 400 watts uh, just to heat the pan up. Like I said, it doesn't take a whole lot of uh, heat to melt this sugar. We'll start at 400, see how it goes. I bumped the power up to 600 because it was a little slow melting, but at the two minute mark, it's already beginning to melt. As soon as the sugar is melted till it's clear, I'll put the uh, potassium nitrate in it. At the four minute mark, the sugar is already melted, so I'm going to pour in the potassium nitrate. If there's any lumps in it or anything like that, make sure you uh, break those up. It's been about six minutes. I've added another 25 grams of fuel to it, so I have enough for a test burn. The fuel is uh, well melted and ready to pour, so I'm going to go ahead and turn off the power. Make sure I stir it up well. And then I'm going to put on my gloves and get ready to cast.
I started out with 100 grams. I added 25 grams of leftover fuel from a previous casting. I have about 25 grams left. So it is a little bit easier to cast more than you need and that way you're not spending a lot of time scraping the pan out uh, and it pours quickly while it's really hot. Now I filled the tube up and uh, it's a little bit, a little over full. I usually like to leave like three quarters of an inch or so because when I push the coring tool down, some of it's gonna ooze out. So it's gonna make a little bit of a mess, but no big deal, I've, paper towels are cheap. Now what I wanna do is push the coring tool down as straight as I can into the core. As you can see, it's oozing out, that's okay. And I've hit the center of it. Didn't come out all the way, but it doesn't have to. This is our test piece, and I'll pull the end off with the guide tool, and you can see that the quarter inch aluminum rod has poked right to the end of it, just perfect. Uh, we'll let that set until it gets hard, and then I'll extract the aluminum core tool and pull the aluminum foil out. We'll see how it looks. I've cleaned the foil off of both ends of it, so let's see if it'll come out. Here we go. Well, it took some effort, but it did come out. And once you get it moving, it slides right out. Now, I'm gonna to try to remove the foil. If it doesn't come out, and if it seems to be really sticky, I'll try to pull it out tomorrow. I'm going to grab it with the hemostats and see if I can twist it out. There we go. I just kept twisting until it released from the propellant and it's out. A little piece left in the other end, I'll just pull that out too. One small piece left in the middle, I'll just use this bamboo skewer to push it out. That's all of it. I'll shine a flashlight down the end of it and you can check it out. Should be able to see nice and clean. That's what we want. Our fuel grain or fuel cell as it is called by Rotary Rockets is now complete. If you've not been to Rotary Rockets, they have a lot of great videos on rocketry. I suggest you go over there and check them out. Now onto the nozzle. Before we get started on the nozzle, I want to thank a couple of people from the Rocketry Forum. Rick Maschek from High Desert Rocketry and Mike, known as All Digital on the forum. They helped me to come up with a solution to cover the mandrel with aluminum foil and to lubricate it so that I could pull the mandrel out of the fuel. And so I'd, I'd just like to take a moment and thank them for that. And for Richard Naka for, well, just about everything else. <laughs> okay, so let's get to the nozzle. Make sure you keep the fuel cell covered up with a PVC cap so that moisture doesn't get into it. First thing we're gonna do is drill a hole in this cap. I'm going to start out with a 3 16 drill bit for the pilot hole. And be careful because the plastic can really grab on the drill bit. It's probably best done on a drill press, but. There, nice and easy. The larger the bit, the more likely it's going to grab. That was a 3 16 This is a quarter inch next. And finish up with a 5 16 Now this one probably is going to grab. I'm just going to go slow and be prepared for it. 
Okay, make sure your hand is not underneath it. There we go. I'm going to use this red RTV silicone because it resists the heat really well and it's easy to work with. This does require 24 hours for it to set up. So the first thing I want to do is, I did have an applicator for this and I don't know, I got lost somehow in my rocketry junk. I'm going to put a generous coat of RTV around the washer. Make that uh, a fairly thin coat. Doesn't really need a lot at this point. And then I'm going to sandwich the washers together like that. That's just kind of to hold them in place while we're working on it. And then I am going to put a generous coat on the outside like this. And yes, I probably should be wearing gloves, but I forgot to grab them. Anyways, they kind of give you uh, blue alien looking hands on camera. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put a generous coat on there. Then next, I'm going to take my bamboo skewer, put it in the center, because every time I try to drop this in there, I seem to uh, miss somehow. And yeah, maybe I'll just put a little bit more here. And the reason why I'm putting so much in is because the cap has a raised center portion and I want some of the RTV to go into the area around it to provide a seal. Okay, now we'll take our bamboo skewer, drop this on there. If I don't use the skewer, it seems to flip every time and makes a big mess. Okay, get that down in there. Kind of squish that all around like that. And don't worry, we'll come back and clean this up with a paper towel. Next, I'm going to take the fuel cell and put a generous coat of RTV on the end of it and uh, let it kind of squish out inside the cap and across the nozzle part. But don't worry, we are going to clean it up and it'll be just fine. One thing I need to keep an eye on is that there is no RTV on the outside of our PVC surfaces to prevent adhesion. I have taken the RTV and a paper towel and what I've done is uh, I've kind of put it on an angle and smoothed it out so that no RTV gets on the inside of the cap when I go to assemble this. Now it is time to apply the PVC cement to both pieces and I'm going to take this off camera and shove the two together on the floor uh, fairly hard so that everything all seals up in there really well. I have shoved the two pieces together and it's a little difficult to see but some of the RTV has come out through the end cap here and that's really what we want to see. I'm going to clean the core up in just a minute. So we'll turn it upside down and use a, uh, well we used to call these pipe cleaners. I'm not sure they're in the craft supply section what they call them now. Yeah, I'm kind of old school. Um, I prefer classic by the way. So I'm going to take the pipe cleaner and fish it down through there. And as you can see, any RTV that's in the nozzle, it's kind of twisted a bit. It's going to clean that out. There. That should be good enough. And now we can put the end cap on. I have put the end cap on and now the motor is assembled. One thing I want to add is before I put the nozzle on, I make sure that the end cap is not on there. That way the air can rush out as we shove that nozzle on there. But the motor is complete. And now I'll talk a little bit about how we want to light it. I usually make two at once. The last thing I do is write the type of fuel that's on the motor and the date. Now this motor is capable of lifting a 13 ounce spool, which I'm going to feature in another video. So it has plenty of thrust. Uh, they're fun and easy to make, but they are real rocket motors and you have to use caution. Any solid fuel motor needs to be lit from the top. And what I use is an Alpha Fire. It's a fireworks igniter like this, has a nice little remote that comes with it. 
and that way you can keep a safe distance, which is really important. You should always assume that a motor that is lit, that it could explode. So make sure you stay far away. There's no reason to be real close to it. You can see it from a distance, not a problem. Or set up a camera near it so that if you want to go back and look at it close up, you can do that too. Now, one thing I would like to caution you about is the proper rate way to ignite it is with electronic ignition like that that uses a remote. One thing you don't want to do is this, use a fuse. And the reason is, uh, for one thing, it needs to be lit from the top to function properly. And the other reason is, this does not look like a rocket motor to most people. And this could invite some unwanted attention towards your experiment. And this is an experimental motor. You cannot use this at a club. It was meant just to learn from and perhaps uh, grow from, but uh, I assume no responsibility for this, no liability. Uh, you just have to use common sense and be safe. I'm going to be giving away a free high-powered rocket soon, so stay tuned to the channel, watch for updates. Until then, blue skies, stay safe. I'll see you soon.